Charles Ustazua, a man sent by God. There is no man yet that has what it takes to help God. And every man's allocation is in his location. No man born by a woman is permitted to tell you sorry. I heard what happened. That is not your portion. Your portion is good news in the morning, good news in the afternoon. I'm not a pastor. God sent me to this city. He sent me. This is not a man who is smart. This is not a man who can preach. This is a man undertaking a divine assignment. For I and the children that God has given me, we are made for signs and wonders. Things only work for workers. Nothing will ever work until you work. See thou a man diligent in his duties. He shall stand before kings and not ordinary people. Isaiah 14 and verse number 24. Let's appreciate the Holy Spirit. The Lord of hosts has sworn. The Lord of hosts has sworn. Saying, surely. As I have thought, so shall it come to pass. As I have proposed, so shall it stand. You know, the Bible says, nevertheless, there are many devices in the heart of man, but only the counsel of the Lord shall stand. Meaning, not everything will stand. Only what is commanded will stand. Lift up your hands to heaven. As one of God's end time prophets, I declare this prophetic word in this new phase of our lives. We have expression in the life of anybody who says the loudest amen. In Genesis chapter 22 and verse 16, God said again, by myself, I swear. That in blessing, I will bless you. He said, by myself, I swear. Genesis chapter 26 and verse 2. God said to Isaac, stay in this land. I'd like you to watch this. Watch this, please. This is very important. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, go not down to Egypt. Don't leave town. You are not like every other person. There is a covenant hanging on your head. There is a prophecy hanging on your life. Dwell in this land that I shall tell thee of. Now, if you read verse 3, I'd like you to pick out something in verse 3, ladies and gentlemen. So, John, in this land, I will be with thee, I will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed. I will give all these countries. Why? I'm under an oath. You didn't hear me. I am under a vow to deliver. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham your father. Meaning Isaac you can be naughty but there is a vow. I am under an obligation to make sure that you don't end like this. I'm under an obligation. That I may bring to pass. That vow. That I said. As I have proposed in my heart. That is how it will stand. In Psalm 89 verse 34. My covenant will I not break. Meaning. My covenant is not breakable. No other the thing that is gone out of my lips. Meaning as God, 
my word is me and I my word if I've ever said it then it will stand in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19 we have also a more sure word of prophecy you know there was a time in this city we had planned well people sold valuables took their money and gave plan well and plan well didn't plan well after a while mmm came and all of them hey we have a more sure word there is no institution that pay like god pays there is no mortal man that pay the kind of wage that god pay now now this is what makes it interesting god will pay you after pay you he start paying your children now after pay your children he start paying your great grandchildren he keep paying he keep paying from one generation to another the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob the god of joseph the god of osazua he keep paying he keep paying no man pay like our god no mortal man nobody pays like him he said we have a more sure word ladies and gentlemen god's word is surer than your lab result god's word is surer than that problem that is giving you sleepless night God's word is too sure. Too sure, sir. His words are too sure. Prophecies are God's verdict. Prophecies are heaven's legislature. Signed into law. It can't fail. It must stand. In verse 21 of Zabstead scripture. Scripture says. For prophecy came not in old time. By the will of man. But by holy men of God spake. As they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Holy men of God spake. As they were moved by the Holy Ghost. How many believe I am moved right now by the Holy Ghost? Yes, Overflowing grace is not my word. It is word as I was moved by the Holy Spirit. I believe God. It's your time. Amen. I believe God. It's not your fault. I believe God that this new season is your season. Amen. If that is you, can I hear your loudest say amen? amen? You know, heaven and earth shall pass away. Not a jot of his word shall fail. In Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11, he said, As the rain come down from heaven and watered the earth, watered the earth and make it bring forth and bow that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall be my word. That cometh out of my mouth, it will not return back to me until it accomplishes what I have said. Meaning, you will be blessed. That you will be blessed cannot return back to God until you are blessed. In John chapter 1 and verse 14. The word that became flesh was spoken in Genesis. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, talking about Jesus, and it shall bruise thy head. Meaning, I will put enmity between your seed and his seed. In Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, Unto us, unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And government shall be upon his shoulder. 
and his name shall be called wonderful counsel of mighty god the everlasting father and the priest of peace these were prophecies it has not taken place not happened are you hearing what i'm saying he said a virgin will conceive and bring forth a son his name shall be called emmanuel god in the midst of his people but these were prophecies now hear me from genesis to the last book of the old testament there is no mortal man who did not prophesy about jesus in genesis is the seed of the woman in exodus the passover lamb in leviticus is the high priest on and on and on in numbers the rock in deuteronomy he said moses said god will give unto you a prophet like unto me prophecy in joshua he is the captain of the host of the lost army in judges the judge these were all prophetic descriptions of what will happen hereafter that has not happened but in john chapter 1 and verse 14 prophecy became you didn't catch this and the word was made flesh the world became flesh meaning prophecy became touchable physical feelable reality you can touch it you can feel it you can hold it now do you remember in genesis the bible says god came in the cool of the evening and the bible said the voice of god was walking in the garden meaning the word of god was walking in the garden now when the bible said the voice of god walking in the garden who were they referring to jesus jesus was the walking word he was the one walking in the garden now he was still the same one who was made flesh meaning every prophecy has capacity to become flesh for the woman who needs a baby the world can become babies for the man who needs a job the world can become job for the one who needs business breakthrough it can become approver so whatever adam called them that is the name that they answered lift up your hands to heaven whatever you want your prophecy to become as i hear your most vibrating amen so shall it become today man's attempt to look for God. Christianity is a loving father coming to his children. That's why you have all manner of religious bodies. They are looking for God. But what is Christianity? For God so loved the world and he sent his only begotten son whosoever believeth in him. What was the gospel of Peter in Acts of the Apostles? Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shekiri, Urobo, Ibo, Yoruba. Irrespective of status or tribe. For more blessings and spiritual messages, please join Pastor Charles Osazua on the following station. Why is prophecy not working? It's not working because it has not entered you. Hear me. When this ministry started, I was one of the most misunderstood pastor in this city. Because you can't match my words with the physical reality. Even when I was putting on rope like tie, putting on, I mean, those, my Osho suit, 
I was still talking. Hey, has this word entered you? In Psalm 119 and verse 130, the entrance of prophecy, the entrance of his word, give it light. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2. Now, take it from verse 1 for understanding. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet. I want to tell you the prophecy of things that will happen hereafter. I want to show you things that will happen hereafter. In verse 2, and the spirit entered me. As he began to speak, it entered. Hey, it's very easy to know a man whom the spirit has taken over. Oh, yes. Anybody can hear anything. But when it enters, what enters becomes you. In those early days, when we were less than 50 people in church, I would tell my hearers and a few people in church, I said, this prophet will be one of the greatest preacher of this age. So we say, hmm, a preacher? I said, this prophet will be one of the most celebrated preachers of this age. Honored by men, honored by institution. In the Babi Saloon. On that decade that is not your property. If nothing else, let the world enter you. Let your prophecy consume you. Now hear me. Why do you think Joseph was never frustrated in prison? Why? What do you think was responsible for Joseph? Never frustrated in prison. Never had to beckon on any prisoner for consolation. You know, there are people, because they have forgotten their prophecies, and the world has not entered them. They are always looking for somebody that will pity them. Even in prison, Joseph was in command. What was the strength of Joseph? Ah, what I saw is too real to be frustrated. What God showed me, I saw myself. I saw my brother, everybody bow to me. It was too real that my prison condition can't change what I saw. Too real that the circumstance notwithstanding, I was lied upon, blackmailed, but it cannot change the fact that God showed me something in the prison. You know what that did for him? He said, please, when you get to the palace, mention me to the king. Because what I saw is not here. It's palace. Mention me. Why? He was speaking prophecy. He was speaking prophecy. Can I tell you something? When you speak your prophecy, sometimes they think you are proud. Say, these Raka people, very proud people. Hey, you know, they say so because they don't understand. Now, because they don't understand, they give us a name. In the first place, they are not supposed to understand. Because the things of the kingdom cannot be explained. There was a time in my life, you know, I was overwhelmed with the happenings in my life. So I tried to explain, oh, it's God. Oh, this is how it's happening. I'm tired of explaining because grace itself is mysterious. If you can explain it, then it's not God. In Luke 1 and verse 38, when the prophecy hit Mary, Mary said, let it be unto me according to your word. Many years ago, about 13 years ago, a woman's daughter got missing. She went to mountain in Ghana, went to different prayer houses. She got tired. The name of this girl is called Abiyua. And said, 
Some said she had died. Some said they saw where she was buried. All kinds of prophecies. Then she came to me. As I wanted to pray, the Lord spoke to me. In 21 days, your daughter will be home. Ah! After two years of disappearance? That's too risky. When I said, in the next 21 days, the woman was just looking at me like video. In the first place, you know what she said? This, this young pastor, this, this young one. People that wear cap, has rod. They couldn't do it. People that wear cap, archbishop, archbishop, all of them could not solve my problem. And this man of God, he didn't even pray. He said, 21 days. I said, go to the market now. Get the clothes of your daughter's size. Put it in the wardrobe. When she comes, that is what you will put on her and bring her here. The woman who brought her said as soon as they left, she was very upset. Very angry. In the first place, the man didn't even receive us well. He just came and bowed down his head and raised, saying, in the next 31 days, no prayer. Ah, I have done seven days all night, 21 days fasting, 40 days dry, 18 days wet. Oh, when I dry, when I've done all. The woman asked her, what do you have to lose if you obey this man of God? Literally forced her to the market. Got the clothing for this young lady. And afterwards, put it in the wardrobe. <laughs> Ten days has passed too. She'll be calling the woman 10 days old, 15 old, 16 old. On the 19th day, this girl became restless where she was. It's like a scale fell out of her eyes. She just got up, entered the vehicle, straight to Benin. The woman was in her shop and stepped out to buy something. On her arrival, she saw crowd. It didn't even occur to her that it was her daughter. They began to touch her. Hey, Abia Iwa, Abia Iwa, Abia Iwa. The woman ran and heard her daughter. Oh, 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 oh. After two years, he, it's true, went to the house, took the clothes, what the girl. And straight to church. At first, apologizing to me. I said, no, you don't need to apologize. What I gave you was a sure word. No, not, not my word. Mm. It was a sure word. I stand in my office. Before deadline. The hand of God will rest upon everyone. And your expectation shall become a reality. If that is, you cannot hear your loudest say amen. Between now and the next 14 days, there shall be dance of victory, dance of celebration around your life, around your home. Whatever is being delayed today is being broken by God in the precious name of Jesus Christ. One of my sons, series of miscarriages. The last one happened. The wife bleeding to death. She called. Papa, please, we need you now. I drove to their house. I was vexed. In very few occasions, I have been angry at that level. Very few occasions. I was so upset at the devil. And I turned to the wife. If by the end of this year, there is no son in this house. No, I'm fake.
February. As soon as I left, Satan said, you are fake. <laughs> Look at you. When will she now become pregnant? Now carry the baby. You know, the problem you have, you are analyzing prophecy. Let's call the spade a spade. Papa said, I will marry before December. No man. You don't need a man. You have always had men. What you need is a husband. A husband, hear me, hear me, hear me. It's men that say, let's be looking at it. Yeah, you know, let's be looking at it. When your husband comes, he won't waste time. If I will tell you, can we get married next month? Ah, why? Ah, next month. Husband, don't waste your time. It's men and boys that waste your time. One lady told me yesterday, he said, I was in courtship for eight years. And the man left me and married another woman. I said, you are a fool. Because within these eight years, there were signs. You, you have seen it. The person the man married is not a spirit. She has always been somewhere. There are things you see that make you cease in that relationship. You see them. So the person that is going to marry you will not waste your time. When a man begins to cut the sheep first year, second year, third year, please cut the sheep and cut it. Praise God. And I called mama, I said, this is where I'm coming from. He said, okay, how did it go? How is her condition? I said, good. I said, but this is what I said. He said, I've always told you, when you are prophesying, don't put date and time. Just say there will be a cry of a baby. The baby can come, now it can come two years, it can come anyhow. And you know these people believe you. If by the end of this year, that child don't come, who will they call you? You have already told them the name they will call you. Then I now began to think as a human being. You don't like truth. Maybe I should have said there will be a baby. To even make matter worse, I said a baby boy. You see, so, you know, my human flesh said, what if it's a baby girl? Are you connected with me? if it's a baby girl. I said, there shall be the cry of a male child, you know, as a prophet that I am. Then I went to God in prayer. I didn't speak my word. Holy men moved. If the word fail, you are the one that we mock. I am not man of Osasua. I am a man of God. Man of God means somebody sent me and his name is God. So you won't mock, mock it. People are already mocking me. But God, they will swear extend it to you. Then I had peace. March, she became pregnant. The baby landed December 22nd. Now, about eight days to New Year. Same year, the house I live today was bought by this family. As appreciation to God, that massive presidential duplex, in appreciation to God, and I started reeking as a man of God. I said it. As the Lord God live it. Every word of God on your life will come to pass. Whatever look like mockery shall become celebration. God will never allow your enemy laugh at you. You will love the last laugh.